This is the Successful Aki Students Podcast, episode 24. Hey guys, and welcome to the show today. I've got a special guest coming on with me today again. I'm going to be talking with Jeannie from Sydney, Australia. She was originally from Hong Kong, and she's moved over to Sydney a couple of years ago, and she's going to be sharing some um, some of her experiences from her first week of architecture school, and this is going to be amazing. I've just so pumped about this interview because uh, Jeannie is really, really knowledgeable. She really knows what she's talking about. And the fact is, she's just come out of university. uh, Sorry, she's just come into university. And this is something I always try to reflect back on, you know, being in my first year again, being in my first week. And it's hard for me to remember back to that to give you guys advice. So instead, Jeannie is going to share that advice with you because she's just been through it. She's in her third week now. And she really, really does know what she's talking about. And she's really ambitious as well, which is surely going to rub on, on rub off on you guys like by watching this video you're going to be more ambitious yourself and i can see that happening even if you're not going into your first week of architecture school and you're already in your third year or fourth year it doesn't matter this video is going to be super helpful for you and i don't want you missing out so if you don't have time to watch it right now please do bookmark it and save a time to watch it so you're an archie student you're smart you're creative and heck you're ready to take on the world with your crazy designs Before you get to that point, however, you need to build up the habits and the knowledge and the skills of a successful architect. And what most students don't realize is that you don't learn these things over time. Rather, you learn these things through experience and deliberate practice outside of your university education. My name's Kyle. I'm an Archie student just like you, and I'm committed to being successful, no matter what it will take. And I'm hoping you're ready to take that journey with me as you listen to the Successful Archie Student Podcast. And without further ado, without wasting your time anymore, let's get straight into the interview. I've got another special guest with me today. Um, I'm joined by Jeannie from Sydney, Australia. How are you doing, Jeannie? I'm good, thank you, Kyle. Thanks for having me. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing well, thank you. That's all right. I'm super happy you decided to join me today. Um, So why don't you start off by telling us a bit about um, yourself? Uh, um, So I'm an international student. I'm not originally from Sydney. I'm actually from Hong Kong. Um, And I just started my first year of architecture school and um actually today is going to be my like the start of my third week so very early in the game um but yeah so far it's been definitely challenging a lot of work but you know it's you know it's expected you kind of know what you're getting into if you're going to get into architecture presumably um but previously before I started architecture here, I went through like the foundation course at UNSW um, and it's basically like a direct pathway from um, kind of like a high school level of education into university. So that's kind of how I got here. Um, And yeah, so yeah, and uh, I guess outside of, you know, school and architecture, um, I got to Australia at the end of 2018 and kind of finished up high school there, decided, you know, what, like I want to move countries and I want to pursue um, I knew I wanted to pursue architecture in high school, and I decided to come to Australia to do that. Cool. So around what year did you decide on architecture? Um, it was pretty much, okay, so long story short, um, yeah. as I progressed throughout secondary uh, secondary school, it was pretty much, you know, the typical, like, science, math, that kind of, um, like, subject, and, yeah, I was not going to spend my life kind of getting into (laughs) careers um so pretty much I switched gears and went into design um like switch programs in terms of schooling and went into like a kind of more arts and design but again very like generic nothing really specialized but um it was pretty much further on I developed a kind of liking towards architecture and kind of building and um I guess creating models because I had the opportunity to do like a little um, like house renovation for my apartment in Hong Kong, which was really fun. Oh, that was awesome. a taster. Yeah. So that was kind of my first taster into kind of like the built environment. And also along the way, I was really lucky to meet some very special people um, also in the field that kind of influenced me and opened my mind up about uh, the world of architecture. Very cool. Um, <laughs> now, I always try thinking back to what it's like um, in my first week of architecture school again. And I try putting myself in those shoes, I guess, to kind of uh, remember how nervous I was and to give some advice to students going through that to um, let them have like a smooth first week. And just completing your first week, um, it'll be much easier, I guess, for you to uh, recall um, 
the good and bad things that happened. Would you mind sharing with us uh, kind of what your experience was um, in your first week of architecture school? Yeah, absolutely. So um, in terms of things that um, I feel like other architecture students should be aware of before they get into, you know, their first couple of weeks is um, things move very fast, mm. very, very fast. And um, you have to kind of keep your wits about you. Um, make sure you're on top of everything. Everything outside of your uni life is organized, especially if you're trying to work and, you know, kind of things like that, because I'm doing the same. So um, organization is really key. And also kind of understand that, I don't know how it is with other programs, but with us, it's quite, like you're thrown in the deep end, really. Um, with Like our first studio project is um, to design stairs with SketchUp. And you have to do a lot of figuring things out for yourself um, outside of, you know, your uni lectures or tutorials. So um, in saying that, the best thing or the best result, I'm um, speaking to some of my other uh, friends also in the same uh, same degree, They, the ones that do better are typically the ones that do experiment outside of, you know, what's required in, in the brief that uni gives you um, because they just have so much more experience, um, you know, working with the different programs that are so novel to us. So, um yeah, making sure that you're expanding your knowledge and teaching yourself things outside of the course. It's so important at the stage as well. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. And um, were you nervous at all during your first week? Not really. I'm not really a nervous person unless like I'm put on the spot about something I have no idea about. I wasn't really nervous, but um, it was definitely a little bit of apprehension because like obviously something you've never done before. So you're kind of more alert, like kind of trying to take everything in and keeping on top of everything, but it wasn't really nerves for me. Yeah. See, I was on the complete other end of that. I was, yeah. I was a, yeah, I was a wreck <laughs> and, mm -hmm. um, yeah, but really in the end, there is nothing to be nervous about as you were saying. Um, I guess not nervous, but, um, some, like some experiences I've had also in my first week is, um, there, there have been some people that has dropped out already. Yeah. Um, so obviously there's, you know, such a big cohort, there's going to be lots of different people, but I feel like obviously do your research and everything uh, before you get into architecture. But once you like kind of figure out or you're not sure about it, I think it's so much better to drop out early instead of later. Um, once you, if the, it so happens that you figure out, you know, this isn't what you want to do, it's better to do that early. It's just, yeah. As well. Yeah. I agree with that as well. Cause I've, I'm in my third year now and there are some students who have been saying they're going to drop out since the first year and they've kind of just stuck to it and you can see how miserable it's making them and they feel like they've got to finish their degree because they've started it and they've got to finish what they've started. But yeah, you can just tell it's not really going to um, uh, be the best option for them. Yeah. Um, Especially, you know, like in, in the industry, you're going against people like people like you, for example, who, who are obviously very passionate about what you're doing. Oh, you know? yeah. Yeah, it's it's not a good idea to stay in something just for the sake of it because you're not going to be competitive. Mm. Kind of my as well. But saying that, there's always a way to build up the passion for it and to get to that um, motivation level, I guess, so that um, you are one of those students who are the competitive um, ones in the industry, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, so could you run us through uh, what subjects you have? Like you'd have, I guess, three or four classes and could you tell us what they are? Yeah, so um, right now, because UNSW is a little bit different, we do trimesters. So okay. um, I'm in my first trimester and we do three courses. So that's, um, we have a studio class, like, uh, no, studio like sort of workshop. You know, it's like a, um, it's, it's different from like a classroom environment. And then we have a communications course. So that's to do with um, kind of learning uh, you know, like Photoshop and Illustrator, that kind of stuff to uh, get your ideas that you're coming up with in studio across. Like that's what that class is aimed for. And then there's an intro and enabling course class. So um, that's, it's more academic. It's like a research-based uh, course. Um, basically all of us are assigned a specific house that, that has been significant in the world of architecture. And we do, the whole term is like to research that house and uh, to later on to create uh, renders and models of that house. So yes, yeah, it's, it's very different, all three classes, but all of them happen simultaneously. Yeah, I was going to say, do you think they all kind of come together so that when you're working on one, um, 
what you've learned and, and one of them is going to um, kind of complement the other ones? Yeah, absolutely. There's so much um, transferable skills as you're going, um, you know, through the motions, through your courses. Um, and I'm pretty sure all other unis are the same. Um, I can speak for UNSW that their course or the way that you sign up for the courses each term is designed in a way that you take on, you know, the foundational skills onto the next project and the next one and so forth. Yeah, yeah definitely. That, that's the way it goes, I guess. And yeah. so how many how many times or uh, how many hours, I guess, in a week are you uh, required to be at uni? What, yeah, that, this is, this is um, an interesting thing that I thought when I first started, because with the timetable, it looks really sparse. So my, my uni days are on Monday, uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. So only three days. Um, my Monday is my longest day because of the studio. It goes for like five hours, but it's pretty, you know, Relax. You, everyone's just doing their own thing, and then um, on Tuesday and Thursday, it's pretty much like an average of three hours at uni. So it doesn't look a lot, but you are expected to do the bulk of your work outside of those classes. So having said that, your timetable might, you know, you might think like, oh, it's pretty chill, like nothing's gonna really get too stressful, but it does a little bit if you don't manage your time well outside. Mm, definitely. Yeah, I think that's what gets a lot of people to like, oh, I've only got seven or eight hours at uni this week. And then you kind of get home and you've just got tons and tons of uh, homework you need to do, I guess. But um, definitely it's important to manage your time, and especially because you've got all these bigger projects towards the end of the semester. And so where you're required to put in a certain amount of hours each week, they all build up to this final project, I guess. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah, that's exactly it. Um, so what are some of the things you did uh, coming up to the semester to prepare for it, if you did anything at all? Um, well, pretty much, there wasn't really much um, like prescribed things to do from the university to prepare, but um, like, I guess to foster some of my interests um, in, in terms of architecture, um, because like one of my like, big audacious goals in the future is to eventually, you know, get onto being licensed and, um, you know, start my own practice. So that's kind of the angle I'm coming from. So I have a lot of interest outside of architecture school in terms of like the business end of, um, you know, sort of like the, like in, in construction or interior design, like any of those things. And um, the way I like to educate myself is to, um, watch YouTube channels. There's so many out there. There's so many great people with so much knowledge to share. Um, and that's kind of how I've been setting up kind of my mindset for um, before I head into architecture school. So at uni, for me, that's where I obtained, you know, the nuts and bolts, the skills. Um, but outside of that, there's so much that I'm not going to get here that I need to educate myself and expose myself to outside as well. So that's yeah, so that's what I've been doing before um, coming into architecture. Yeah, I think that's awesome. It's kind of like you've just set up some goals and you're using those goals to um, kind of push you towards um, yeah. achieving them, if that makes sense. And then um, kind of what you were saying is that, yeah, you really need to learn these skills um, on the side to have a vision of the future. It's definitely going to help pull you towards that. Um, I guess that's kind of why I'm doing like successful Aki student and all that to teach students those things that you won't learn at university, but are uh, pretty much the most important things that um, will set you apart from other students. So did you have an orientation day? Um, we did. We had a week. But um, in UNSW, a week, it's not exactly tailored towards, you know, your specific faculty. Like, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm talking about the week in general. It's lots of fun activities just to get people meeting each other. But in terms of... Um, like degree specific, faculty specific events. Uh, they did have a big welcoming at, uh, at the beginning for all the undergraduate students, which which was really fun to hear um, from the the dean. Uh, yeah, it's, a, it's like a personalized sort of welcome to everyone. And then um, something really good that we also have here at the university is um, a peer mentoring uh, sort of group where it's basically students from like the higher years they kind of you know take the first years under their wing and um you know if you have any issues or problems uh in terms of workload or you, you're not sure how to interpret a brief that kind of thing you can always go to them for advice which i think is really cool yeah it's a really good resource to have mm -hmm. um so how did you find it meeting new people um 
And I, I guess, do you have any advice for someone who doesn't know anyone going into uni um, with them and how they could meet some new friends? Because that's, I feel like something a lot of people struggle with and something that scares yeah. a lot of people. Yeah, that's such a great question. Um, to be honest, I'm in the same position as well, because as I said, I'm not from Sydney. Um, a lot of, you know, some of the other people that have come to UNSW, like they, they know their friends from high school and, um, you know, they have kind of like that base core group of people. I know two other people in my degree, like as in um, a good rapport, um, because I did my foundation studies with them. But, you know, obviously I'm aiming to expand that sort of network as I go along. So my sort of tips is to um, engage with engage with your peers, like in studios, because studios are so free flowing. It's not like a classroom where you'd be quiet, listen to the teacher. You're, everyone's collaborating, working on their own projects. Um, you know, ask the person next to you, like, oh, what do you think about this? Like, do you have any, uh, you know, like does, does this part of the model make sense to you? Um, kind of like me reaching out to you the, the other day when I was doing my project, um, I was really grateful to get some, you know, feedback. So just little things like that, you know, reaching out to different people, seeing what they think about your work. That's always a great way a great place to start in terms of building a relationship. Yeah, completely agree. Um, and I guess I want to talk about as well, I guess something else people are scared of is getting lost at campus. <laughs> I know it's not, it doesn't seem like a big thing, but it really is. If you, if you're rocking up to your uni campus and you've got no idea where you're going, it can be quite intimidating, I guess. So, yeah. um, what was it like, uh, getting around your campus and as someone from, um, Hong Kong as well. I guess you wouldn't really know um, Sydney all that well yet, um, even though you've been here for a couple of years already. But um, did you have any troubles with getting around campus? Um, well, yes, it's a, it's a huge campus here in, uh, in Kensington. So it's definitely um, advisable to kind of get acquainted with where your classes are going to be before your term starts, before your first class. That's always a good idea. Um, you know, you need such a big place. Everyone's really welcoming. There's nothing wrong with, you know, rocking up the a weekend or two before, uh, you know, your classes start just to, you know, suss out where your classes are going to be. Um, that's always a good idea. That's kind of uh, some of the classes I didn't have issues finding because um, I already kind of knew the campus a little bit from my foundation studies here. Um, but, you know, there were definitely other um, studios, like, for example, the built environment building we have here, I haven't really been to. So, um, yeah, I definitely like showed up during a week and, you know, kind of found the classrooms for myself beforehand. <laughs> yeah, that's great advice. Because um, I remember my first couple of weeks, I got super lost. I had no idea where I was going. Um, and the way I got around that, I guess, was just by talking to randoms or um, uh, go finding a group of students who I'd seen in my orientation day and just uh, making conversation and saying, I got no idea where I'm going. Can you help me out? Um, and everyone's super understanding and they all like everyone at the campus wants to help you out. So I guess that's um, a good piece of advice just to ask around. And um, as you were saying before, just talk to people and they'll be happy to help you. I just want to add on a little bit um, yep. in terms of organizing yourself before uh, before the term starts. Um, as I as I kind of touched on earlier, because the term starts so fast, once you get into it, the last thing you want is to be stressed out by you know random mishaps, not knowing where you're going. I guess the mo the way to be the most successful as a student at university is just to kind of mitigate all those stresses outside of you know what you already have to do, like. The, that's just really being kind to yourself and, and you know, helping yourself along. And, and I really encourage everyone to kind of, you know, think about ways that they could just minimize stress, like extra stress. Mm, definitely. Yeah, yeah, that's great advice. Um, all right. So I do want to hit you up with a bit of a fire round here. Um, so just a couple of short questions with um, short answers, I guess. So um, do you have a favorite architect? Yes. Um, really typical answer I guess for for females but it's going to be Saha Hadid <laughs> yeah yeah uh do you have a favorite building would it be one of hers uh favorite building that's kind of um I did I did a lot of um, research and looking into the Haydar Aliyev building the one with like this this uh like the swoop um that's a really beautiful one that I always that always comes up when someone asks me about my favorite building um another good one is the, do you know about, it's actually the one you posted up on Instagram, that really iconic one in Hong Kong. 
Um, on your uh, store. You know I'm, what I'm talking about, right? I, I know what you're talking about. I'll, I'll have I to get a photo of it. I the name of the building, but I knew exactly what that was as soon as I saw it. It's such an iconic shape on, on like the Hong Kong skyline. Um, that one's a really, a really good one as well that I've personally been to. Um, yeah, so those, those, are, those are two that, you know, comes up when you ask me that question. Awesome. Um, and I guess, I don't know if you've read many architecture books. Um, otherwise, would you have, I guess, a favorite architecture book or maybe a favorite YouTube channel that um, helps you um, with your architecture? I actually do for both. Okay, um, cool. <laughs> so for the books, um, there's there's a guy called Eric Rain. I hope I'm saying this right, Eric Reinholdt. And yeah. he's, uh, and he he uh, you know he kind of does this workshop called uh, Thirty by Forty, like Thirty X Forty. He has really great work. Um, he he's good on his YouTube channel. All his videos super informative, super um, like cinematic. It's it's great editing. Um, he's a great resource that I always go to. Um, and he also has two books a volume one and a volume two called Architect Entrepreneur, which I own and I have read. And they are awesome, um, like, point of reference to kind of, you know, get your bearings right, get, uh, understand the lay of the land when it comes to the architecture industry. Um, and also, uh, he tailors his information a bit more to those entrepreneurs out there that do want to eventually start their own thing. So I uh, really, really recommend those books for you know that particular niche of people um your book that i have read the uh how to how to ace any project in architecture school that was a resource that i used before i started you know i started my program um a lot of great concepts in there uh you know sharpening your pencils that's one that's highlighted the minus five plus 50 rule um that's all that's also some some really really good advice uh in there that i do implement um, YouTube channels. Uh, there's a woman called Karen Vaughn, an interior designer. She's from Vancouver, uh, and she owns this company called the House of Vaughn. Super inspirational. One of my biggest inspirations as um, a woman in the industry. Um, she has a great channel. I, I recommend everyone to check her out. She's super authentic, genuine. She doesn't. She's she's really really warm and like a friendly person. Um, and as a female, you know, you're kind of program to think that oh to make it in business or to make it you know to, to be successful you need an air of like you know <laughs> I don't know if you, you get like kind of like devil, <laughs> kind of like a devil worth, worth Prada sort of vibe but <laughs> she's not like that and I find that really refreshing from her not to mention her, her work is just genuinely great and just speaks for itself so yeah those are some those are some people that I do recommend checking out yeah that's awesome um, heaps of great resources there. Um, and I guess last question of the fire round is where can someone find you if, um, you have Instagram or something like that, if someone wants to connect with you? Yeah. Um, the best way to find, uh, me in terms of my architecture related work is, um, my Instagram handle is the Archie student. So T H E A R C H I student. Um, that's a really good handle you've got. <laughs> Yeah, I'm surprised I, ma I managed to snag it like no one else. Yeah. But yes, yeah, so that's pretty much where I post my work and you know update um you know some some of the things I'm doing for uni or uh, for architecture. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, so yeah, definitely go follow Jeannie if you guys are on Instagram. <laughs> All right, awesome. Um, we are running out of time. Is there anything else you want to add before we leave? Though, is there anything that you would want to share with um other architecture students or a piece of advice that you have? I know I'm putting you on the spot here. Yeah, no, that's all good. Um, you know, we've, we've already covered off on some really good advice in this video, but another thing that I do want to touch on that is so important is don't forget to develop your soft skills, mm. especially if you want to be successful because at the end of the day, architecture, um, you know, learning the programs and all that, that's great to have those, you know, skills in your arsenal, but really what's going to, you know, push you up in your career is the ability to deal with people, to deal with lots of different people. You know, um, in the industry, you're often working with so many different groups. Um, you know, you have your clients, you have your builders, you have your project managers. So the ability to smoothly navigate between all of that is so important. So do exercise that. 
Man, I think that's awesome. I think you've really got um, a great mindset and you've, um, you're have you definitely ambitious and I think that's a wonderful trait to have. Um, I just want to say a massive thank you for joining me on a Monday morning. I know most people would be like, no, I, got, I want to sleep in on Monday morning or something like that. But no, I really do appreciate you coming out and spending the time with us. Thank you, Carl. Thank you for having me. Wow. How bloody good was that, guys? All I can say is thank you so much, Jeannie, for being on the show. You were a great guest. Um, and if you guys have made it this far, thank you guys so much as well. You guys are a great audience. Um, I just want to give a clap to all of you. A round of applause all around, really. <laughs> but no, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this and Jeannie taking the time to interview um, or be a part of the interview. So if you guys liked this video, please do leave a like on it because it does help share it out to other architecture students who will find this useful. Um, and if you guys aren't already, please do subscribe because if you don't, you'll miss out on, the, on, on all the great content and interviews that we have here at Successful Arc student and also if you guys want you can check out the show notes with the link in the description that will take you to a page where you have the transcripted version of this or the audio version of this and it will also have all the resources um, including the books and the youtube channels that we talked about on today's show and finally thank you guys so much if you guys haven't checked out my ebook already how to ace any project in architecture school you can do so with the link in the description as well Thank you, thank you, thank you, and thank you to Jeannie for being such a great guest, and I'll see you in the next episode of the Successful Archie Students Podcast.